Right, I'm Tommy Wharton of Bartizzi Lab and in this particular session we're going to be looking at using an umbrella. Now we see in Bartizzi and historical martial arts as it's a really fun showpiece people making use of the umbrella for fighting. This is a pretty standard umbrella all different shapes and sizes but we're focusing on the ones with the crook at the moment so these crooked umbrellas here typically they have a harder point at the end they've got some degree of crook some larger some smaller and kind of the ribs of the umbrella here. Now what I see a lot of in Bartizio self-defense and period self-defense is people using the hook against the neck, against the legs to pull people over. And really it's mostly bullshit. You know, it's very hard to pull off with a very robust solid cane. With an umbrella, it's not designed to drag mass. It's gonna be very hard for you to move a concerted attacker. And the effort you're going to take to move him, if you possibly can, he's gonna smash your face in like an angry gorilla. So if we are gonna use the umbrella for self-defense, we need to think more seriously about its anatomy as a weapon, what's useful and what isn't. So my conjecture is this, that this end of the umbrella is largely useless. Uh, many of them are rattan, they're weak, they're loosely attached. It's not like a, a blade, there's not like a full tang to this. They're relatively loose, relatively weak, even in the more robust versions, moving, dragging or manipulating a human with this is very tricky. You know, sometimes we teach it for a little bit of novelty, a bit of excitement, but for real self-defense, if you really have to defend yourself with an umbrella, abandon this hook. I would say if your life depended on this hook, you might as well move into unarmed. You might as well move into your boxing, your kickboxing, another situational weapon. This hook is not gonna do you a great deal of good. The body of this, you can whack people all day with this and it's not gonna have a single bit of impact. So the only useful point in a fighting umbrella, really. I really disagree with people that think this can be effective outside of it, historical novelty and a bit of fun to play with. Real self-defense, sack this off. Don't hit with the ribs, most people would agree on that. It's how we use the tip. Now this, this umbrella is pretty useful. It's got quite a hard tip with a brass point. Some of them it's a bit stubbier, but all of them are typically a bit more robust at the tip. So if we're going to use our fighting umbrella, there are a couple of different ways in which I'd recommend it. And basically, there are two iterations. Up close, I recommend this. Most people carry the umbrella facing down. So we're gonna raise the umbrella with the point facing up because most of the time we're in a fight, we're closer than we'd like. We're closer than is comfortable. You see lots of umbrella self-defense start where the opponent's way over there and I've got the umbrella here. That is a very unrealistic attack scenario. So if we're using the umbrella, one, catch the umbrella very close. Make sure you grab, not the handle, but the bottom part of the shaft of the umbrella and take a grip just before the end point. We're gonna bring it close to our body, like a soldier standing at guard. Then we're gonna drive the umbrella upwards and we're aiming into the throat or under the chin. Now, you get closer, <coughs> like so. And again, we can do that multiple times. So we can go one, two. When the opponent steps back a little bit, we can raise, for a three. One, two, three. Don't overextend the umbrella. It's very easy to grab and take off you. So bring it up close because by the time we're in combat, we're going to be closer than we think. So bring it close to the body. And again, you're keeping the opponent at point. There's no point my point being anywhere else. I keep the point next to me and therefore next to the opponent, always facing up at his eyes, at his throat. You know, it's in an uncomfortable place. Even to camera, you can see that's uncomfortable. You don't want that near you, near your throat, near your eyes. So as soon as the threat's on, we're ready. We drive up, making sure our mass is behind it. It's not just arms, we drive our legs up too. And we're pushing, we're really driving with our right arm here, keeping the elbow close to the body. And we're keeping the angle very sharp up, unpredictable, into the throat or into the eyes, depending on where the opponent is. So practice that in multiples. One, two, raise the point now, three. After that point, get used to the idea that now largely the umbrella is useless and we might need to toss it. At longer range, this kind of poking and jabbing doesn't put too many people off. This needs to be a weapon of surprise. So one, two, three, sod the umbrella. Now we're fighting. Now we're doing something else or we're running, okay? Don't use the weapon for something it's not very suited for, which is combat where both participants know the weapons in play. This is a surprise weapon. So from surprise, bring it close to the body, assuming the opponent gets very close, which they will do if they're attacking you. 
make sure you brace it, keep your elbow in, drive it up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, effective use one. If by any chance, although unlikely, you know the combat is happening and you're further away, the single most poignant use I've had for the umbrella is as a range extender for the lead hand. Okay, so in your left hand, hold it now midpoint, so midpoint in the shaft here. And what you essentially do is use this as a jab extender, then you move in to your unarmed combat. So we hit typically once or twice, then we plow in with our crosses, with our elbows, with our grappling. So we almost see this as a, as a temporary, a transactional point. Really, this is to introduce Kazushi, fear. No one likes a thing going towards their face. Soon as they know the fight's on, not many people are scared of an umbrella. But immediately, from the opening stanzas of the fight, launching with this with the same speed and power you would with a jab, and then crashing in with an armed combat, that Kazushi, that disruption, gives you the time and opportunity to fill the gap with hammer fists, elbows, headbutts, and other things. So from here, an extreme range, I drive in with that, then I come in with something else. <coughs> Here. And again, I'm just using the elbow for an example. It's whatever you feel comfortable filling that gap with. Could be a cross, could be a finger jab, elbow, knee, kick, whatever you want. But there's a long range extender. So if you see two people walking towards you, not suspecting you want to be preemptive, I always advise grabbing it to the midpoint or more towards the end, do the thrust, then fill the gap with something else. So just to recap on the use of the umbrella, I largely find this. Pointless, useless, it's fun as an academic exercise, but you can't drag a proper attacker around with this. It's not going to happen, and I challenge you to try it. It's not going to happen. If I want to smash your face in, you're not manipulating me with something as flimsy as an umbrella hook. So, why bother? So it's low percentage. The ribs, pointless. The tip, useful, but sparingly, and always be ready to discard the weapon and move seamlessly into something else. You'd have seen that my Bartitsu Lab logo is an octopi, you know, it is a, is a squid-like creature. It's designed to represent there are many arms to Bartitsu, there's many ways and opportunities. Don't just get hung up on the fact I've got something like a weapon, I need to always use it. Once it's passed its sell-by date, once it's been used at its most effective way, be ready to transition into savat, into pugilism, into a temiwaza, whatever the situation calls for. So again, up close, if, the, if you know the fight's on and it's happening, Bring it close to your body, strong, elbow in, thrust up, throat or eyes, boom. And you can compound it, one, two, three. But after that, I would say then abandon and move into something else. Or if the fight's at longer range, you can launch with something like this as a surprise piece of Kazushi and attack. Again, aiming for the eyes and throat. Sometimes this works well with a passing step, but either way, you launch with this. After that point, you fill the gap with an armed combat and you quickly get rid of this encumbrance because at close range you might see people doing fancy locks but it's only a bit of fun they're not going to work in real life so stick to hard poignant bayonet style thrusts both hands are beneficial because you can target you can weave it around you can aim to eyes and throats and behind the ear you've got more weapon control so again if you are doing self-defense with the umbrella know your umbrella one know its strong points know its weak points understand the fiction of using the hook do try it in concerted sparring for you to see and bear in mind that an umbrella hook is often weaker than a cane hook and get used to the notion that you need to bring the point up into a state of readiness before you can defend yourself accurately so i hope you find that useful um, if you disagree come fight me i hope you enjoy it uh, the umbrella is a fascinating weapon to use it is a bit of a historical oddity people do expect it in bartitsu so do give it a play explore with it play with it this is my particular path my boo and in my boo it's up, it's out, and it's long thrust, and outside of that, it's just for keeping you dry.